Welcome back to the ECG course. This is chapter two on the ECG leads. In chapter one, we discussed the electrocardiograph, uh, talked about the different aspects of EKG paper. In this chapter, we're going to talk about uh, the actual leads. Here's an example of a 12 lead EKG. Uh, when we say leads, we're talking about different angles of view of the heart's electrical activity. So each lead is a different camera, so to speak. All right, so we have 12 different cameras or 12 different views on a 12 lead EKG. For this discussion, we're just going to concentrate on the limb leads. So I'm kind of separating this in half. Over on the left side, you have your six limb leads. Okay, and over on the right, you have your six precordial leads, V1 through V6, but we're not going to talk about any of those just yet. We're going to save that for a later discussion. So in the six limb leads, okay, leads one, two, and three, those are your standard leads. Lead two is sometimes considered the monitoring lead because a lot of times when you turn on EKG monitor, it's automatically in lead two, and there's a reason for that. <clears throat> and then AVR, AVL, and AVF are your augmented leads. The A stands for augmented. All right, so one, two, and three are bipolar leads. That means they use a positive and a negative electrode to obtain those leads. The augmented leads, AVR, AVL, and AVF, they have a positive electrode, but they use two other electrodes to cancel out, so to speak, uh, to get the negative side. So if you picture the heart, and, and we'll get into those leads specifically, the heart ends up being where the negative pole would be. So what do we know about EKG leads? Well, we know that we have to put these different electrodes on the body and we usually use, uh, nowadays we use four, we used to just have three, okay? And we put them somewhere close to the limbs. You have your right arm, your left arm, your right leg, and your left leg electrodes. Now as far as placement goes, as long as you're about 10 centimeters away from the heart, you should be okay. There's different advantages and different disadvantages for different placement uh, ideas. So the limb leads, when they're first created are meant to go out here on the actual uh, limbs, so on your ankles and wrists, would be ideal to get the electrical picture, but you have a problem when the patient starts to move. So a lot of times people will put them up here on the chest and on the abdomen, but that also creates a problem with heavy breathing and it could end up being too close to the heart to really get an accurate EKG. So what I prefer is to have the arm electrodes on the deltoids because you have minimal movement of the arms in that area and it shouldn't be affected by breathing. And then the leg electrodes on the tops of the thighs. Okay, so it can go anywhere. You can put them on the upper torso as long as it, you're about 10 centimeters away from where the heart is. And if you're trying to imagine where the heart is, just make a fist and put it like right in the middle of the sternum and that'll be right about where your heart should be. So that's the electrode placement, and that's where we get our leads from. We know that we're used to having four electrodes on the, on the patient, but that green electrode, the one that goes in the right leg, is generally considered a neutral or ground electrode. It doesn't give us any of the leads that we use for viewing. Instead, what it does is it minimizes outside electrical activity uh, and allows us to view multiple leads at a single time. Okay, so here's your standard placement. Uh, I've got both different uh, options here where you can actually put in the limbs on the left or on the right, uh, more towards the torso. So taking that placement, we actually get the leads. And you can see that the electrodes are connected in this triangle. It's called Einthoven's triangle. And that gives us each lead. All right, so your right arm to left arm, that's going to give you lead one. All right, lead two is going to be your left leg to right arm. And then lead three is going to be your left leg to left arm. And it's going to make more sense as we start to talk about it, what these leads are actually viewing. I want you to notice that uh, the left arm electrode can actually be positive or negative depending on uh, which lead you're viewing from. And that's true for the other electrodes as well because when you start talking about the augmented leads, for instance, uh, AVR, AVR uses the right arm as a positive electrode. So 
these electrodes can actually change their polarity depending on the lead that you're looking at. All right, and remember the lead is the camera angle. Okay, it's the camera angle that you're looking from. So how does lead one, if you look at the picture here on the left, and we know that this is lead one, this one on top, okay? So if that's lead one and the heart's right here, how is lead one actually seeing any of the heart's electrical activity? Well, that's what this next picture is kind of depicting. In physics, two uh, vectors, or in this case, two leads, are equal as long as they're parallel. And that might sound very confusing in advance, but basically, if you took this lead one, you can just kind of mirror it parallel all the way down. That's what I did here on the right, this right image. And it will pick up any of the heart's electrical activity uh, as it relates to its electrodes. For example, if you look at that arrow going down towards the, that would be the patient's left, down, but it's down towards the right of the image, this arrow here, all right, is getting get picked up by uh, lead one, despite the fact that the heart is, you know, below the actual lead's angle of view, because of those parallel, uh, you, you know, you got to pretend that these parallel leads exist. All right, so it will pick up the electrical activity as it relates to its electrodes. Because of that, because the leads are equal as long as they're parallel, we tend to intersect them, and you'll see these diagrams, and it makes it easier to understand how they're viewing the heart's electrical activity. So if I drew the heart here, let's use a different color. All right, if I drew the heart right here, if that's your heart, then now this is lead one, lead two, and three. Now you can kind of picture the way that it, these leads are looking at the heart. For instance, lead two is looking up at the heart from its positive electrode, all right? Lead three from its positive electrode and lead one from its positive electrode. This kind of explains why lead two, and I'm just gonna shade this in here. This is our heart. This kind of explains why leads two and three are actually considered the inferior leads. When you start getting into 12 lead EKG interpretation, it, it'll make a little bit more sense, but Leads two and three are considered your inferior leads because they look up at the bottom of the heart. And lead one is considered a lateral lead because it's looking over at the left side of the heart from the lateral wall. Now, what is the electrical activity that it's picking up? Well, this is where we start to get our EKG waves. Whenever the mean vector, and if you go into the ECG access tutorial and you watch the, that series of videos, you'll kind of understand what mean vector is. Just imagine it as all of the heart's electrical activity averaged into a single direction, okay? So specifically the ventricles is what we're talking about right now. When all the ventricles, all the electricity in the ventricles are averaged into a single direction, that's what your mean vector is, okay? So as the ventricles depolarize, whichever way that that electricity is traveling, the average of that electricity, whichever way it's traveling, is going to depict what comes up on the electrocardiogram. So, if that electricity is traveling towards the positive electrode of a lead, okay, towards the positive electrode of a lead, then it's going to cause a positive deflection in that lead. Now, this, again, is very dependent on which lead you're looking at. If that mean electrical activity is traveling away from that positive electrode, it's going to give you a negative deflection. And if it's traveling in a perpendicular direction, okay, it's basically a 90 degree angle, it would give you this equiphasic, okay, equiphasic, meaning it's just as positive as it is negative uh, deflection. So this kind of should give you some intuition as to where all these different lines are coming from on an EKG. So here we go. I, I've actually put the cameras in to really drive home the point. If you're looking at, when you're looking at the different leads, you're looking at different angles of view, all right? So in this picture, I drew an arrow over the heart, and that arrow is kind of showing you where the average of all the uh, wave of depolarization, the average direction that it's going. And you can see that it's gonna give you a different wave or a different type of complex in each lead, uh, depending on which lead you're looking at. So if we were looking at lead one, this same wave of depolarization, ventricular depolarization, might show up mostly positive because it's going more towards the positive electrode than away from it. 
but it have a little bit of a negative deflection because it's not going completely towards lead one. And then in lead two, it's even more positive with a, a smaller negative deflection because even though it's going almost completely towards lead two, you could see that if we follow the arrow out, it's not going completely towards the positive electrode. Um, and then in lead three, you kind of have the same thing. It's going definitely more towards lead three than away from, all right? But it's almost completely perpendicular. So you have a little bit more of a positive uh, deflection and a larger negative deflection than the other leads, uh, but it's not equal phase because it's not quite perpendicular. It's a little bit more towards lead three than away from. And if you just drew that 90 degree angle line, you'd see what I'm talking about. This would be perpendicular to lead three and you can see that the arrow is a little bit more on the left side, meaning that it's going more towards lead three's positive electrode than away from it. So hopefully that's kind of giving you a little bit of, of an idea of where these different waveforms come from. All right, so that's leads one, two, and three. Those are your standard leads. But using those same electrodes, those same four electrodes, we actually get our augmented leads. Leads AVR, AVL, and AVF. Now what does that stand for? AVR stands for augmented voltage or vector to the right arm and then you have augmented uh, vector to the left arm and then augmented vector to the foot meaning the left foot. Okay so that's where AVR, AVL, and AVF come from and they're augmented because it's not using an electrode, a single electrode, as a negative electrode. It's using the heart, so to speak, as the uh, center of the negative electrode. And here's what we're talking about. So AVF uses the two arm electrodes, so to speak, to kind of cancel out and create its negative electrode in the middle. And that's where we're going to place our heart. If you look now, kind of picture each one of those, look now over here to the uh, image and where I put the cameras, and you can see, now, it, they do, like, for instance, AVR looks like it's almost going in the same angle as lead two, but it's completely opposite of lead two. Lead two would be more like right here, and its positive electrode is down at the left leg. AVR's positive electrode is up at the right arm, so it's looking at an opposite angle. So if you think about the wave of depolarization, AVR would look almost completely opposite on an EKG as lead two. It would have a positive uh, deflection where lead two would have a negative and, and so on and so forth. So putting all of those together, you would get your six limb leads, okay? And this is called the hexaxial reference diagram. Each one of these different uh, endpoints, end positive or negative, has a different angle. And when you start talking about the electrical axis, uh, that angle becomes even more important. We're not going to talk about that for this discussion. Uh, but it really can give you kind of a comprehensive understanding of what's happening with the heart's electrical activity. So I've put the heart in, in the middle of that, and now I've added the uh, labels for each lead. So you can kind of see how each lead is looking at the heart. AVR, let's start at AVR and we'll go clockwise. AVR is looking down at the heart from the right arm, AVL, looking down at the heart from the left arm, because remember, it's looking from its positive electrode towards the heart. So, so any electrical activity coming away from the heart, as long as it's going towards that a positive electrode, it's going to cause a positive deflection. If it's going away from the positive electrode, it'll cause a negative deflection. All right, uh, lead one, looking over at this lateral wall. So AVL and lead one are looking at a, a very close portion of the heart together. Uh, and when we start talking about 12 lead EKG interpretation, you will see that those two leads are often grouped together. Same thing with 2, 3, and AVF. Those three leads are considered your inferior leads because they look up at the bottom of the heart, at the inferior wall of the heart. All right, so that's it for the discussion on EKG leads. We're going to bring back some of that as we get into the EKG interpretation stuff. I just don't want to spend too much time on it now without actually showing you any EKG rhythms. Okay, if you wanted to go back and review chapter one on the electrocardiograph, you can go ahead and do that by clicking on the left image. Or you can move on to chapter three by clicking on the right image. But don't forget to subscribe to our channel and to leave us some feedback uh, in the comments section below. 
All right, I'll see you next time.